Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. In this video, we will be checking how to configure firewall on Azure storage accounts and how to limit access only from a particular virtual network. Before we jump into the Azure portal and start configuring the actual firewall, let's try to understand why we are doing that, why we are going to be configuring Azure firewall and configuring the virtual network access. So consider this scenario. So you are over here, either you are sitting at your home or you are at your office, one of the two scenarios, and you are trying to access your storage account. Now this is a scary scenario since from the internet, you will be able to access your storage account by leveraging its primary or secondary key. Similarly, if you have internet connectivity through HTTPS, you will be able to connect to the storage account. Now that should not occur. If you are configuring secure application or you are storing some sensitive data on your storage account, then you should not be able to access from anywhere except the places where you intend the access to your storage account. For example, let's say that the data that is there on the storage account should be accessible from a particular virtual machine that exists on the virtual network. So this is the virtual machine and it is sitting on a virtual network. So the storage account should be accessible from this virtual machine. Anywhere else, somebody tries to connect to this storage account, that connection should be denied and should be deemed as unauthorized. Now that is what we are configuring. We are configuring the firewall on this particular storage account and that firewall will say give access only to this virtual network and do not give access to anywhere else. Now let's say this developer comes and he says that I have to travel someplace else and I am not able to connect to the virtual machine for some reason. So I need to be able to connect temporarily to this particular storage account to upload some critical data for the application and then I'll log off. So you have the second option that is configuring the firewall you can allow only one particular IP address or a range of IP address. If you do not want to configure the firewall for the whole network, you can configure it for a set of IP addresses. That way what will happen is when this person will try to connect to the storage account, the connection will go over the internet, but this time because the firewall says so, he will be able to connect to the storage account. So let's jump into the Azure portal and let's look at this scenario from a practical perspective. Here I'm connected to the Azure portal. There are a couple of things that we'll look at before we can start configuring the firewall. So here I'm connected to the Azure portal and this is a storage account. So I'll click on it to navigate to my storage account. This is a storage account that I want to access. I want to limit the access so that I'm not able to connect from my laptop whereas I am able to connect from a VM on a network. Where is that virtual machine? This is the virtual machine VM accounts 101. The public IP address is this one, 40.114.12.78. And the virtual network for this particular virtual machine is RG Harvesting Clouds Infra 101 VNet. The subnet on that virtual network is default. Now, I have a couple of things already opened up. This is a storage explorer on my laptop. That is, I'm connecting from my laptop when I will be connecting from this storage explorer. I'm also connected to the virtual machine. So this is the virtual machine. So I also have Azure Storage Explorer on this virtual machine. When I'll connect to the storage account from this virtual machine, I'm actually connecting from the network. Make sense? Let's proceed. So first scenario, this particular storage account, if I want to access this storage account, I'm an administrator, so I want to access it as an administrator, I leverage access keys. Although in the last video we saw that leveraging access keys is not a good idea, you should try to use shared access signature. If you haven't checked that video, do check the link in the top right corner or in the description below 
and I highly recommend that you check that video to find out how to securely access your storage account. For the demonstration purpose for this video, we are using access keys. So let me select this connection string. So here I'm in the storage explorer on my laptop. So I'll right click anywhere, click on connect to Azure storage to connect to that particular storage account. In here, I'll leverage the option of using a connection string. Hit next, provide a display name, provide the connection string, hit next, connect. And here I'm already connected to the storage account. I can double click on the blob containers. I can see what all containers are there. Containers are like folders on the storage account. I can click on these containers and I can see the data, see the files that are there inside that container. There is only one image file inside this container. If I try to upload, I will be able to upload to this particular container. Let me disconnect this by right clicking and clicking on detach. And then let's jump on to the virtual machine. So here I also have Storage Explorer opened up. I can do right click, connect to Azure Storage. It opens up a similar connect dialog. I can use the connection string. I can provide it with a display name. Display name could be anything. Connection string is what matters when connecting to the storage account. Hit next, click on connect. And I'm again able to connect to the storage account, list all the containers and see the content within the container. So in this particular scenario, from both from my virtual machine on the virtual network in Azure, as well as my local laptop, from both these storage explorers, the connection is going over the internet. Now, if you recall the earlier scenario, I want only this particular virtual machine to be able to access the storage account, whereas I do not want anywhere else, for example, my laptop to be able to connect to the storage account. So I'll right click detach, hit yes to confirm. So right now we are back to a clean slate. Let's jump back to the portal and start configuring the firewall. To do that, on the left hand side under settings, click on the firewalls and virtual network section. By default, the access is allowed from all networks, from everywhere. You want to select selected networks. So here you have a couple of options. The first option, this particular section is where you can configure your virtual networks, which virtual networks should get access to this storage account. Anywhere else, you will not be able to connect to the storage account. The bottom portion will revisit it soon, but this is where you allow particular IP addresses. So let's focus on the top part first, the virtual networks. You click on add existing virtual network. Under the subscription, you find your virtual network. And this is the virtual network we saw earlier. I can navigate back to the virtual machine and show you the virtual network again. It's RG Harvesting Clouds Infra 101 VNet. And that's what I'm selecting over here. And then within that, the name of the subnet was default. That is what I'm selecting here. So here, the message that it says is that you don't have service endpoint for Microsoft Dart storage enabled on the virtual network. So this service point, service endpoint rather, it gives that particular virtual network or a subnet within the virtual network direct connectivity with the storage account. So it never leaves Microsoft backbone. The connection occurs on the Microsoft backbone. I'll click on enable. Right now, this is not adding the virtual network to this firewall. It is only enabling the service endpoint on the subnet for my virtual network. This service endpoint is just a feature. So this is like a switch. It's either on or it's either off. When you have this as on, it just means that this particular subnet will be able to connect to all the storage accounts in Microsoft network, leveraging Microsoft's backbone. The traffic will never leave Microsoft backbone. Now, once the service endpoint is enabled, I can click on add, thereby adding that particular subnet to the firewall of my storage account. Now, if I hit save, what I have done is 
I have enabled the connection only from this particular virtual network. Anywhere else, I will not be able to connect. In fact, I'll be able to connect, but I'll not be able to perform any operations. I'll not be able to see what containers are there. I'll not be able to create any files. I'll not be able to update any data. I'll not be able to download any data. Let's see that in action. So the access key should already be in my clipboard. So I'll first of all, navigate to the storage explorer on my laptop. So I'll right click on the storage accounts, click on connect to Azure storage, or I can click on this icon and then I can select user connection string. Hit next, provide it with the name. The connection should succeed, but what will not happen is I'll not be able to do anything with that storage account or with this connection. I'll hit next, hit connect. The connection is there. It shows me blob, file shares, queues, table. These are the default categories, but can I see the containers? I double click. It tries to load, tries to connect, but this request will be denied by the firewall. As you can see, this error message came. The error message says, unable to retrieve the child resources. This request is not authorized to perform this operation. As we expected, the firewall is denying this particular request. I'll hit OK. Nothing more we can do over here. I'll need to detach this. Now let's navigate to the virtual machine. So here the same storage explorer, but right now I am within the virtual machine. I'll right click, connect to Azure storage, user connection string, Click on next, provide a display name, provide the connection string, hit next and click on connect to connect to this. I can again see the categories, but can I connect? Of course, since this is what is allowed, the virtual network, the subnet within that virtual network, where this VM is created, where this VM is connected to, that is allowed by the storage account. Let's double click and confirm. So I am able to list all the containers. When I click on the container, I am able to see the files. If I try to upload a file, I select a particular file. Let's say this test file, hit upload. I will be able to upload this particular file. So it is transferring within a second or two. It has transferred that dummy file. So I am able to perform all the operations from the VM on the network. Since that network is whitelisted, that network is allowed on the storage account. Let's navigate back to the Azure portal and see the configuration again. Here I'm allowing the access from selected networks. What that network is, my virtual network, and within that virtual network, a specific subnet. If you have multiple subnets, you can pick and choose which subnet should be whitelisted and which subnets should not have access to that storage account. Now the second part, the firewall down below. So in here, I can specify the IP address, a single IP address or CIDR. CIDR is the notation. For example, I can say slash 16. This is the CIDR. So it says it only supports public IP addresses. It does not support your private IP addresses. This is a known class A private IP address. So if I have public IP addresses, I can provide those in CIDR notation. This is how the CIDR notation looks like. And then I will be able to configure the firewall for those. If I need access only for my laptop, I can say add your client IP address. I can click on this checkbox add the client IP address. And then if I hit save, I will be able to access this particular storage account from my IP address. So last thing we are going to do is let's validate this. Let's connect back again to the storage account using the connection string. Provide it with the dummy display name, the connection string and hit connect. This time I am able to see all the containers since my local IP address 
is whitelisted now in the firewall. I am able to see all the files. This is the file I uploaded from that remote virtual machine. And I can see that, that file from my local laptop. That's all for this video. This is the firewall. This is very powerful. I highly recommend that for any production applications, this should be the area that should be explored. If you have not configured firewalls before on your storage account, I highly recommend that you start doing this. That's all for this video. If you have any concerns or any doubts that I did not cover in this particular video, comment below and I'll try to answer as the time permits, or I'll try to do another follow-up video if required. If you like the content, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of the latest content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.